Can you, like, beat the map, please? <laughs> He's just gonna assault the mugger! I want to cry, this is beautiful. You just capture random street animals and butcher them? Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ben, and today I'll be reacting to Avatar The Last Airbender Season 2, Episode 15. Now, after the last episode, I am so curious to see what's actually going on in Ba Sing Se, because I, I went into it so hopeful, I thought this city was going to be great. Nope, it is just go- it's denying the war's even a thing, so that's like a problem in and of itself. It's so outside of everything going on. You have the main conflict with the Fire Nation trying to invade the rest of the world, and now you have one who- the city, the biggest city we've seen so far, just completely ignoring it. So, I- I don't know how this can go, so we have that issue. We also have Appa, who's still missing after so many episodes, and I need that taken care of soon. Aang's doing okay, but seeing how he was in the desert, I don't want this to be prolonged for ages, I need Appa back. And then on top of all of that, you have Iroh and Zuko, who seem to be starting- they have, they've got a good little life going now. But you have Jet in the city as well, but he's almost been- I'm glad he was taken care of and he's away from them, but he's also been hypnotised by whatever's going on. I think it was like the Dai Li, are they hypnotising him to think there's no wall? So that cannot- because he's- that's going to be a, such a disaster. His whole identity is built off of the Fire Nation and what they did to him. There's no way that's going to stick, so that's just going to- that's just going to explode in just Jet going nuts. And then like thinking of the city itself, you have the king who is basically a puppet for Long Fang, so he's the actual leader, and he's the one that's making everyone not think there's a war. So the king's useless, great, and you're dealing with a guy that doesn't want anything to do with the war, so how can you get his army? It's not- that's just gonna be really difficult. Then you have the whole thing with Judy. I'm- did they, what happened to the- like her smile was- that was just done so well in the last episode. The fear I felt when her smile faded, it makes me wonder what has actually happened to her now, because she disappeared. We don't know what happened to that Judy, and she's been replaced by another Judy, if that even- if that is even her name. So I need to know, like, what has happened to the old one, what's going on with that whole thing? But yeah, as always, if you do enjoy this video, please remember to like and subscribe, it really does help the channel to grow. And if you do enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon, the link will be in the description. Over there I'm uploading these videos and the full reaction a week in advance, so if that's something you're interested in, feel free to check it out. With that said, let's just dive on in. The tale of Toph and Katara. Oh, we're actually seeing him shape! Okay, both of you. Okay, weird. Honestly, didn't realise Ang shaped. I thought that was just natural, but okay, it makes sense. And she's just a mess. Aren't you gonna get ready for the day? How much hair do you have? I'm ready! <laughs> You've got a little dirt on your. Everywhere, actually. I call it a healthy coating of earth. Yeah, she probably doesn't mind that at all. A girl's day out. Do I have to? It'll be fun. I don't. Mm, she doesn't look like she'd enjoy that. Uh, we just got okay. Lady day spa? This feels weird. Is this like the whole episode? Just these two having a girl's day out? No, like pressure from whatever happened in the last one. Whatever you say, as long as they don't touch my feet. No. Nope. Oh, they're touching their feet. Oh. Stop. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah, that's what basically like scratching her eyes. What? Oh no. <gasps> <laughs> oh, I love that she can like bend mud like that. This is so cool. I'm loving how creative their use of bending has become. Ah. That wasn't so bad. I'm not usually into that stuff, but I actually feel girly. Ah. Yeah, I like this. So they are actually bonding. I, so it's not like the tension anymore. It's full on like their friendship blossoming. Great. Wow. Great makeup. Thanks. For a clown. <laughs> oh. Wait. She actually feels bad. I think she looks cute. Like that time you put a sweater on your pet poodle monkey. <laughs> Can you like beat them up, please? Is that too much to ask? Good one, Star. I'm surprised she's like reacting like this. No. A good one, like your poodle monkey. <laughs> she seems so. She seems so sad. What's she doing? Yes. <laughs> now that was funny. Yes, it was. Oh yeah. <laughs> Just completely flushed them away. One of the good things about being blind is that I don't have to waste my time worrying about appearances. Oh. I don't care what I look like. I'm not looking for anyone's approval. But it clearly affected you. That's what I really admire about you, Toph. Uh, she's crying. This is so sad. And I know it doesn't matter, but you're really pretty. Oh. I am. Yeah. You are. Oh, I love this so much. This is such I a sweet the thing. Compliment, but I have no idea what you look like. <laughs> Thank you, Katara. Ow. Oh, oh, the 
This is like a little, um, oh, no, 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 a little mini stories all pushed together. This is quite cool. I think that was such a nice little story. Now I will? If this is for a romantic picnic, may I suggest this lavender one? No, it's not a romantic picnic. What are you doing? But it is a special occasion. Okay, so we've got like a whole little story about Katara and Toph, and now we're getting one on Iwo. This is so cool. The moonflower likes partial shade. Instant. Awesome. Okay. Very loud child. He's from the vine, falling so slow. Is that gonna work? Little Soldier boy, come marching home. It's working. Comes marching home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's like, are we just gonna, is this like, I, are we just gonna see Iowa putting all the good out into the world? Is this what this story is? Oh, Earthbenders. This is so awesome. That's not awesome. It is usually best to admit mistakes when they occur. No. When I'm through with you kids, the window won't be the only thing that's broken! No. <laughs> but not this time. <laughs> <laughs> he really just liked it. I'm really moving as fast as I am. Give me all your money. Oh, why? Why? What are you doing? <laughs> I'm mugging you! <laughs> that stands. <laughs> He's just gonna insult the mugger! You are unbalanced, and you can be easily knocked over. Are you Awesome! Okay, I was insane. I love you so much. With a solid no, stance, no. you are a much more serious threat. Don't teach him how to mug people! Much better. I will! You do not look like the criminal type. I know. You look starving. So you really think I could be a good masseur? Of course! Mm -hmm. You're actually saying that I'm having tea with the guy! <laughs> While it is always best to believe in oneself, a little help from others can be a great blessing. Why could you not have been Fire Lord? This is insane! He's just putting so much good out into the world. Imagine if- they, Oh, wow. The, seeing this, just so clear how different this whole world would have been. Is this the picnic? Happy birthday, my son. Oh. Only I could have helped you. Oh! Falling so slow. Wait, this. Like fragile. The song. It was. It had something about Soldier Boy. Well, okay. Soldier Boy comes marching. I want to cry. This is beautiful. In honor of makeup. Is that okay? Um, I think his voice sounds different. I think the vo original voice actor died. Okay, I need a little break. I want to talk about that one. Okay, so, um, going straight into the next one. Uh, so I guess that is the reason why Iwo changed so drastically. He couldn't help his son, so now he helps anyone he can. I, I love him so much. That little episode, that little tale was amazing. This looks depressing. Hey there, fella. You look hungry. Ad! Oh! <laughs> Armadillo Tiger. The Dai Li won't give me any money because the kids stopped coming. And the kids mm. won't come because my zoo's nasty and broke. Yeah, that can't be good. I wish I could get her a big open prairie like she likes. Aww. Can you not like free these animals or send them out into the wild or something? They seem... You're not getting any money anyway. But how are you going to transport all these wild critters? What are you doing? I'm great with animals. Oh! No, you're not. You just unleash a, a zoo into the city? How are you not kicked out? This is chaos. And there's one of those things. This is a nightmare. And... What's that? <laughs> okay, now you're gonna start helping, so you just release all of them at once. You can do maybe one at a time. And now you're sending them to other parts of the city. Much easier in my head. You think? Oh. What? That work on all animals, not just bison. Even the lizards. Okay, great. <laughs> He's crying. <laughs> and it's still just. <laughs> it's still it's just chaos. Open this gate, or what? Or that? Yeah, open the gate, please. Okay, great. I, this episode feels so weird and I'm loving it. We're getting so many different contrasting um, like feelings from it. Top of the tower was like quite, 
it was a bit sad, but more justified, and we got to see a lot more of their friendship. Iros was beautiful and heartbreaking. This one is just pure chaotic. Is he making a... What are you doing? Okay, they're all in the same habitat. Are you making like a giant zoo? Are you redoing it? I love this so much. Is he actually making a zoo? And you're... Oh, wow. I mean, poor farmers and their land, but cool zoo. They seem a lot more happier, but it definitely looks a whole lot less secure. Oh, it had babies. You should think about working with animals for a living. Mommy, Miss mm. Snowflake got out of the house again. Oh, he locked a cat in there. Ang. On second thought, you should probably stick to saving people. Yeah. The tale of soccer. Oh, great. Is it? Oh, that's cool. Just casually throwing the boomerang. What are, you, what are you gonna get up to? What are you doing? Is this, well, I don't, what tone is this gonna be? Is it funny? Is it gonna be sad? Winter moon glows with bright love. Oh, a tree. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, great. Something struck me in the rear. I just wound up here. <laughs> Wait, is, he, is, he, is, he, is he gonna have like a little poetry story? Five, seven, then five. Syllables mark a haiku. Oh. Markable oath. <laughs> <laughs> I am not an oaf. <laughs> Back again, that works. How well. In the spring, he climbs treetops and thinks himself tall. That's quite an insult. You're so smart with your fancy little words. I'm not gonna this be able to count. So hard. Ooh. He's doing well, I guess. Whole seasons are spent mastering the form, the style. None calls it easy. This idiot's gonna get it straight away. Like I paddle my canoe, I'll paddle yours too. It's actually doing quite well. <laughs> okay, this is gonna be a funny tale. In fall, the clinging plum drops, always to be squashed. Ugh. I'm always right back at you, like my boomerang. <laughs> ah, he actually managed to put that in there. <laughs> the beer. Young ladies, I rocked ya. Was it? No, that it wasn't it. That wasn't it. Uh, Idiot. That's one too many syllables there, bub. <laughs> <laughs> Just completely thrown out. Poetry. What is your life? Oh, okay, Zuko. They're really going through everyone. I'm loving this style. Uncle, we have a problem. What? What problem? There is a girl over there at the corner table. She knows we're Fire Nation. Ha, ah, what did you do? Seems to me she has quite a little crush on you. <laughs> I was wondering if you would like to go out sometime. He'd love to. Yes. <laughs> Answer for him. Come on, Zuka, have some happiness. Oh no. What did you do to your hair? Look at you. You look so cute. Ah, good, thank you. How do you like the city so far? It's okay. He's not very chatty, is he? What do you like to do for fun? Nothing. Not at all. Would you and your girlfriend care for dessert? She is not my girlfriend! Why? Why are you like this? Just have fun! You have quite an appetite for a girl. Um... Idiot! Where were you and your uncle living before you came here? Yeah, she's trying so hard. <laughs> Come on, Zuko. Traveling around for a long time. Why were you traveling so much? We were, uh... Come on, think of something. Part of this traveling circus. Really? Idiot. Let me guess. You juggled. Yes, I juggled. Can you show me something? <laughs> oh! <laughs> She looks so happy. Come on, just play along. Just try and do something. That sounds really fragile. Whoa. Your master swordsman. I haven't practiced for a while. I was thinking maybe since he's a swordsman, maybe he could t t have something like that carry over. Maybe he throws a swords around, but I don't know. I don't know. That tracks. I can't believe it. They aren't lit. Oh. Close your eyes and don't peek. You're gonna. Oh no, you're gonna fight Ben. No one around. Please, no one around. Don't get caught. Okay, it's small. It's not huge. It's okay. This, that's so cool. That's a quite delicate fire bending. Oh, wow. Ah, go on, Zuko. Okay, you might have saved the date. His animation style's changed again. It's back to being sort of more, like, rounder and, like, less sharp. I brought you something. Oh, idiot. He thinks you're our most valuable customer. Your uncle is a good teacher. Mm -hmm. I have something for you, too. Now it's your turn to close your eyes. Have some happiness. Come on. Aww. What's wrong? Why? It's complicated. I have to go. Yeah. 
You just can't allow yourself to be happy, can you? Why are you so self-destructive? That was such like a nice evening. I mean, yes, that whole relationship would have been a lie, but still, it, just to have some joy. What was your night, Prince Zuko? Yeah. It was nice. Okay, it, it got some joy out of it at least. Great. Tale of Momo, what on? Okay. What, what am I meant to expect? Appa, okay, he's back again. It's clearly a dream, but at least he's back. Is it, so it's gotta be dreaming, right? And it's just food. Okay, nightmare. What kind of rants, what kind of random nonsense are you gonna get up to? Oh wait, you found Appa shit? Is Momo gonna be the one to find Appa? Is that? No, that's too long, that's too long. We are, we're actually gonna have something focused on Momo. No, that's a cloud, it ain't Appa. That's fur, that's Appa fur. That, woo, that looks, no, I didn't, oh. I love this Momo actually misses Appa. He cares so much. He's not just a weird little cat thing. He's not just chaotic and crazy. Oh, those, those don't look friendly. Oh, great. Can they get in? You can fly, fly up. You're trapped. Oh. Get yeah, up, great. Fly higher. Don't stay by the... No, no. No. Keep going. Hide in the crowd. <gasps> what? What is... <laughs> <laughs> Why is Momo so weird? <laughs> Just go along with it, great. <laughs> See? Ah! Oh, one's on him! How strong? I've got a question. I'm so questioning Momo so much right now. How intelligent and strong is he? Oh! Captured? Oh. Are they separate? That's a skull. That's, that's lovely. Oh, that can't be good. Oh, okay, I'm thinking so much more of Momo now. So he's not just some pet, he is actually smart and very strong. Yep, yep, you, that. you just capture random street animals and butcher them? <laughs> this is how we understand. Okay, so are we, is he only crazy because he doesn't understand? <laughs> Posable thumbs! You're empathetic. You're saving them. Okay, Momo, I'm think- <laughs> You befriended them! Okay, I'm thinking of you so much more differently now. No, why'd you take that? Follow, is this bad or good? Why are they take- I think- Waiting, they're leading him something. They didn't- Don't the cats know? There's no one actually gonna find Appa. What? It's that footprint. Oh, you're not big enough to realize what it is! It's a- Does he know what it is? It's a giant footprint! So Appa was there! When? Oh, okay, that was an amazing episode. Why? Uh, so, so Appa was just right there. He was there. His footprint was there. Just mo. I need Momo to know if I couldn't tell from that. Is he? Is he too small to realize that he's sitting in a footprint? Does he realize it's a footprint? Would he guide the rest of them to that location so they can investigate it? Yeah. So he's found Appa's fur. He's so close. I'm so surprised that Momo is actually the one to get that close to finding Appa. Right, I think that episode might be one of my favorites just from how much they did there. That was like six mini stories that were just absolutely amazing, each and every one of them. And each one changed the tone so differently. I, I need so that's 20 minutes, six. I'm bad at maths. That was barely, that was not long at all for each of them, yet they did so much. Katara and Toffs, absolutely love. We got more, so much more. So first off, their whole tension, that feels like it's gone. They feel friends now. I'm so happy with that. Because it has taken a while and it felt believable that those two would have that those two would have friction. But now that that's, it feels like it's gone, they are getting along better. And I'm so happy with that. So not only are they just hanging out together and going on like a girl's day thing, they're also defending each other and making each other feel good. Like Toph's reaction to that is quite, it surprised me a lot, but it does make sense. She, I guess a lot of, no, because, she always feels very confident and stubborn, but is that a mask for like her own insecurities? Because she can't actually see what she looks like. So it makes sense that, I guess, no, of course she would care what she, other people think she would look like. I think everyone does. But since she can't, she has no control over it. And she puts on the like, I guess the mask of just being mean and aggressive so people won't 
in Sora because they know that if they do, they'll she she'll beat them up. But, like it was so like weird to see her like that, so vulnerable and like crying. It suddenly made me think of her a whole lot in much in like a much different way because well, from what we've seen it like quite a few times now where she is a huge strong character but she has these vulnerable moments but now so it's not just the power that makes her vulnerable and then in some situations she becomes weak it's actually herself and her personality she puts on a strong show but she is still a 12 year old inside i'm absolutely loving that i will story i think that might be my favorite of this so we I'm so happy we finally got the connection I think the, of what happened with his son because I th we knew his son died here and I guess it was implied that he failed to save him I never made the connection but it was just I thought he would just died in battle I might not have been there and then he left and we don't I never knew what made him change so drastically here it made it so clear he couldn't save his son and I wish we could I want a scene like a flashback of how that actually happened I would love that but I guess this was kind of what we needed we just know that that battle happened and he couldn't save his child and he couldn't help him and i feel like that's got to be such i think that would make an amazing episode i want to see that so badly but it, so he couldn't save his child so now he's spending the rest of his life doing whatever he can to help others he is so amazing and i'm so wish he could have been the fire lord things would have been so much more different but then again if he did become fire lord what would it have it would have had to have been he would have still had to have lost his son with the, if that battle succeeded, and he didn't lose his son, that would have made him Fire Lord, and Ozai would not have if he succeeded. But then he'd still be what he was before he lost his son, which would have been not that great, and he'd still been with the Fire Nation and evil. Like, the song it has so much meaning. Did he make that song himself? It was like, um, I'm not going to remember the legs, I just remember Soldier Boy come marching home. Is his longing for his son to return to him. I'll be so happy if that he actually made that. It's not like a full-on traditional thing. He made that song dedicated it to his son that he wants to come back but he he obviously can't like the tone of that little short as well it went from being so like crazy and chaotic with the mugging and like just him soothing people to just so heartfelt and tear-jerking at the end and then you had the two more funny chaotic stories which was ang and Sokka. so ang full-on makes a zoo helps animals great wacky love that and it's a good break yeah th those two episodes were a good break in i guess how seriousness the little shorts work is tough and Katara quite serious. Uh, Iroh definitely more serious. Aang and Sokka very much just comedy. Then so that, I loved those two. They didn't do much to develop the characters. It was just a break in between I guess seriousness and going more in emotional depth. Then we had Zuko's who it was so sweet he like went on a date and he's like so is that him like almost moving on? Or, no, it's not moving. He's still, I don't know. We don't know where he is. He's definitely, I, he's, I think he's trying to build the life here, but I think he mentioned it in the last episode that he doesn't want that. But it's nice that he's almost giving it a try. So he's dating someone who lives here or went on a date with someone who lives here. Don't know how many, if they'll go on more. I don't know if that would be official, his girlfriend, but it was still just a nice thing that he went and he just enjoyed and he had like a nice time. He wasn't thinking about the Fire Lord. He wasn't thinking about the Avatar. He was just himself and he just let himself be happy of course he cut it short at the end because he kind of has to do that because he just can't let himself feel joy for too long because i guess in his mind he shouldn't be allowed that he's still on that whole honor thing he feels like he doesn't deserve to be happy i'm just so glad that he just let himself feel happy for a brief time and maybe that can just be expanded upon because it feels so good when he's not hating himself and lastly momo's episode oh momo's little tail thing loved that so he got so close to finding appa Thinking of Momo in such a different way now, I thought he was just like the sidekick, the funny pet thing that was like just for comedic relief. He's actually incredibly intelligent and strong and empathetic. That is quality that I never expect from this little character, but I'm so happy this episode did that for him. Cause like he was basically just an accessory to the team at this point. He was found at the temple and he's been going along. He had, and he just does funny random stuff. He actually had a full on purpose and he's gotten so close to finding Appa. Now I'm just hoping that that continues or like that carries over to the next episode. I want him to go back to the ab to the rest of the team and tell them what he's found or at least try and show them what he's found. Show them the piece of fur and guide them to the spot. I'm so hoping that that happens because it will just cement that Momo is more than just a little sidekick. That episode was just absolutely stunning. I'm just in shock at how much they managed to do with like 20 minutes. They had so many different little stories, each displaying their own tone and emotional depth. And 
I'm just, it's astonishing how well it worked. I mean, each little tale stands out so well. and All of them, were there, were, there wasn't like a bad one in there. They were all amazing. Like, I think my favorite has to be Iroh's. That was just so, I think I just love how beautiful it was and how just much it is to his character. It's his son and he, like, the, the son's buried in Ba Sing Se, so he's not even in the Fire Nation. So did he go to where he, is the tree, like where the sun is? Like that is just so heartbreaking, and I I love that man so much now. He's so happy, and he brings so much joy to the world. And it's like that all came from losing his child. I think that episode did an amazing job of just capturing what kind of emotion that has. But yeah, I guess the first one with Katara and Toph loved that. It was so cool just to see Toph in a more vulnerable state and get to see her and Katara have this friendship and like to spend the day together and just get along because you know, I mean they haven't really had like a moment together since the whole thing where they were fighting about Toph pulling her own weight. Then it was training Aang where they did clash a little bit but Toph was kind of just being the bigger person and just saying yeah yeah I'll try that and that's just not trying it. So now I guess conflict is over and they're working together and actually not just working together they're spending time with each other and just enjoying that time. So great that they're on like a better page. But yeah this that one definitely did so much for Toph getting to see how much she does actually care about her appearance and how much she is insecure about things she, that's out of her control. That's what it is. She's insecure about things that are, are out of her control. So she can't actually see what she looks like. So, and I guess her like vibration thing can't help with that again. She can see things around her, but she can't see herself. Like we, she talked about how she could see every little footstep that an ant made. So that is got to be so, I guess, blinding that she, she can see everything else around her in such detail, yet she can't see what she herself looks like. And she can't, I guess, see what other people look like. She can just feel the vibrations that things make. So of course she can't see where her hair goes or she can't see like what color. Yeah, she can't see colors, can she? So it's like, it's, it's so heartbreaking to see that she's this such a strong character, but it's all put there to protect herself from things that she can't control and the things that she is sad about herself. I absolutely love what they did with the bullies. They could have risen above and just walked off, but no, they had to flush them down the river. So happy with that. And I just seeing like what effect they had on Toph is just, it's, I think I just love how much emotion they captured there with her. Then of course, I rose, I want to do such a standalone, like look at that, ep like I'm gonna call them episodes. They feel like an episode, even though they were what, like two minutes? It's six episodes and six tales in 20 minutes. It's shocking how short they are, but how much they did. Iroh's got to be my favorite. Seeing him go around and just help people. What was it first? He helped a plant and guess, I guess just put some joy out into the universe by having it bloom instantly. He soothed a crying child with that now beautiful song. And what else did he do? He, it was the children with the football game and just telling them to leg it after he did give good advice. He said, own up to your mistake and there's honor in that and try and redeem yourselves. Then the guy was massive and was gonna try and kill them. So yeah, leg it, still good advice. And then the whole mugging thing. Absolutely, I love how like funny that was. He was <laughs> the guy was standing to him with a knife in his hand. I would look so unfazed and unbothered. Like, with that stance, <laughs> he just went on to just give him life lessons, went on to actually teach him how to mug people properly, and then gave him advice on what to do with his life and change his life around. It's just shocking how amazing Iroh is as an individual because he has all this battle strategy as well. I keep, like, it's so easy to forget that he is an incredible warrior. He could have just taken that mugger down and could have ended him very quickly, but he chose to help him and be nice to him and try and, yeah, just turn his life around. And it's all because of that heartbreaking end scene where I'm going to assume that's got to be where the sun is buried. So he's not even in the Fire Nation, he's actually in Ba Sing Se. Maybe that's the reason why the Fire Lord wants to take over Ba Sing Se so much, because his nephew's body is there. So I, I want to see if there is some sympathy to the Fire Lord. Maybe he wants to take it over so that Iroh's son's burial will be part of the Fire Nation, or it is just to conquer the world. I don't know. Maybe there's some sympathy there. Not sure. But like, it's, I think that shot at the end with the sunset and the tree, it was so beautiful. The music, I love how when he's soothing the toddler, when he's soothing the toddler, it's such an upbeat and light song, yet it changes so drastically when he's singing it to his son and how he wants him to come home. And I think just everything about that scene was incredible. I think the sun setting as well is always really symbolic. The sunset is always seen as like the end of it. It's the end of the day. And for like Iroh, it, I think, it almost exemplifies his pain. He's a parent who lost his child. That's almost, I always see that as one of the worst things that can happen. 
Yeah, I've always seen it as like parents want to, their children to outlive them. That's like the natural progression of things and the next generation taking over from the other. Having like you lose your child has got to be one of the worst pains imaginable. And just how the sunset basically, it shows it's the end of his son's life, but Iroh still has to go on and he'll be there the following morning. And now he's in the city where his son's buried and it just feels so heartbreaking. He's such a light and just fun character, yet he's got so much pain in him. And I'm just loving that we got to see that in this episode. Then of course there's Aang's story. I like that he's happy. I like that we're seeing that happy side of him again. He's he's gone through the grieving process now because that was what he was doing when he lost Appa. It was anger. It was, I guess, has he done bargaining yet? But he's basically come to acceptance in the fact that Appa's alive and he can be found. That's where he's at. And I'm so happy that this was almost a distraction for him. He was dealing with animals. He was being fun. He was being a kid. And he's letting himself just be happy and enjoy life. So I'm glad that that is there. And I'm also happy that the episode also dealt with Appa in some way but it wasn't Aang-centric, so he's allowed to be happy and he's allowed to have that distractions because he can't be miserable and thinking of Appa all the time. That's just not how life works. And I like that it, he is still a 12-year-old. He's going to get distracted and I'm just loving it. Also, I feel his whole takeover the zoo is kind of redemption for what he did to the fly in the desert because he straight up killed that thing. There's like no doubt in my mind he murdered something there. Yes, it was a giant bug bird thing, but Aang's a vegetarian. He was raised as a monk. So I'm assuming he goes along the lines of life is sacred and that sort of thing. So I'm assuming that, cause yeah, I would w almost want him to think badly about him killing the fly. Maybe not, but it, the whole scene felt impactful the way he killed it. It felt like the, the camera wanted you to focus on him that he just took a life there and that was his rage. So I'm gonna see this whole zoo thing as him trying to redeem himself for taking a life by making life for other animals a whole lot better. Zockers, I'm not sure how much depth there is to his episode. It was just hilarious and funny. It, I guess he's trying to appreciate poetry. That's cool, because he is a smart guy. So I can understand that he wants to appreciate like literature and that sort of style of just, yeah, just poetry in general. And he was actually quite good at it. Shame he messed up right at the end, but it's just, yeah, it was just funny. And that's just soccer, isn't it? Hopefully we'll get some more like serious stuff with him because I love it when they do give him those serious moments and we get to see how just dependable and just great in combat and stuff he is. We got to see him casually throwing his boomerang around. Loved that. So, but I feel like everyone else has been developing with their fighting style. They're catching up to where Azula and her gang is. But Sokka, he f it feels like he's being pushed to the wayside and I want him to get like an episode or something where he gets like a power boost. He gets to do something that can help deal with these new powerful threats that they have to face. Zuko's one I'm so happy with. He got to experience some joy and happiness. He went on a date and someone actually likes him. So he's, first off, he needs to realize that he has qualities that people like. So he, cause I feel like he hates himself. I feel like that's where he is. He lost his honor and he feels like he's disappointed in himself. I don't think he feels highly of himself. He got that whole thing where he, it was when he was training with lightning bending. It was saying about humility. He felt like he was very humble, but he still has the whole thing. The, the whole complex of honor makes him not humble. I feel like the thinking that he can attain a certain amount of honor, that doesn't feel humble to me. If he realized that he can never reach a certain amount of honor, that feels more humble. So he definitely has some pride left, but I feel like he does still hate himself. He was asking the sky to shoot lightning at him and basically you could have killed him. So he was asking for that. So I'm not, so I feel like, yeah, I'm just happy that he allowed himself some joy. I want him to be better. I want him to start doing good. And this, we've seen like a few things now where he's on, on, he's on the right path and he's making good choices and being able to feel good. I'm just so hopeful that this leads to somewhere where he can be in a much better space because he's still very angry. We saw it with how he ended the date. He just left. And I don't know if there's any gonna, become, I don't know if she's gonna continue seeing him, if that's just a full on end. But he slammed the door. It feels like he's not allowing himself to feel joy. So I'm hoping that he will just get over that soon. In the final part of this episode, I just love it so much. It was Momo just fi trying to find Appa. So that's made me completely think so much differently about Momo now, because I thought he was just the accessory, the sidekick. He was just the funny little cat animal thing that was along for the ride. It was something to connect Ang with his home and the past, because Appa was always there with him, yet Momo was the addition in this new world that links back to the time of the airbenders. So that was always what I saw Momo as. 
Now we know that he's not as dumb as I thought he was. He's actually pretty intelligent. He's empathetic and freed the animals that he knew was going to get killed. And then he, what was it? He's also pretty strong because he was flying with like two of those cats dragging him down. It was till the third one dragged him that he fell. So it, I, yeah, I'm loving that little creature so much more now. And it, I want that to continue. What I'm hoping for so much. Next episode, Momo goes back to the gang, tells him what he, what tells, or tries to show them what he's found. I'm hoping that he isn't too small to not realize that he was sitting in a footstep. I'm hoping he realizes what it was, goes back, gets them, because it will just reinforce that he is a smart thing. It won't be for just this little story. He is smart and they'll carry that forward. So I'm so hoping that that happens. And lastly, I think this episode as a whole is just so stunning. Seeing how it feels like it was the variation of it all it was just incredible. I almost want to think maybe each little, yeah, each little episode has got to be made by different people. They focused on different things. They focused on different tones. I'd be astonished if this was all made by one person who was able to condense six individual stories, six individual tones into 20 minutes. It is astounding. I, I need to know like the behind the scenes of what happened here because this might be one of my favorite episodes. I would so love to know what went into making this because it was just done so well. Yeah, I just really hope now we get even more episodes like this because you guys have said that since season one, it just keeps getting better. This one felt amazing. So I cannot wait to see what the rest of this season, what the rest of the show looks like if they're able to do something as amazing as this. But yeah, with that said, that does bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you in the next one for season two, episode 16. See ya.